this module, we will learn about opportunities and leads. We'll also walk through how and when to make them and why they matter. Every sale, customer interaction, activity, or research that you do in Salesforce will be related to and recorded in an opportunity or a lead. Let's start by understanding what the difference is between an opportunity and a lead. Opportunities track your sales and pending deals. Opportunities are qualified leads that you've converted or created under existing accounts. A lead is a sales prospect who has expressed interest in your product or company. Leads are potential customers or prospective buyers. The easiest way to think about this is opportunities fall under accounts that already exist in Salesforce. Leads are new companies that you want to qualify and eventually convert into an opportunity under a new account. Let's look at opportunities first. Since opportunities live within accounts or are related to accounts, let's start by looking up an account that we already know exists in Salesforce. Then let's click into the opportunities object. You'll see in an account that has been around a while that there are plenty of opportunities that, from a high level, indicate how many attempts, successful or otherwise, there have been to sell one or many of our products or services to this account. In this account, for example, we can tell that we've attempted to sell to them over 20 times. The letters at the end of the opportunity names are the class, and the stage shows how far we got in that deal. So we can see how many times we tried to sell the PES open to this account or the career fair or any of our other offerings. You'll notice here that we have a special naming convention that we use for opportunities. Every opportunity that you create must follow these same guidelines. First is company's full name, dash, semester and year, so if it is spring 2021, you would write spring 21 or fall 20 for fall 2020 dash, and then the related class. So every opportunity will either end with APS, CRM, EE, SM, or KA. If you are creating an opportunity but wish to contact the account about APS and CRM, you will need to make two separate opportunities and log all activities separately. A common question we receive from new students learning Salesforce is, how do I know if I should make an opportunity? Well, before you contact new or prospective customers, you should always check if they exist in Salesforce. To do so, all you need to do is hit the search tab at the top, enter the name, and see if anything pops up. If the account already exists, then you should see if you can claim, split, or trade for the account. Once you've done so and it's rightfully yours, you can create an opportunity and log your first activity. Let's create a new opportunity and take a closer look at what an opportunity consists of. Let's start at the account page and click the arrow on the opportunities object. Select new opportunity. Here, you'll start by placing the opportunity name in the top left corner. Remember to use the format that we just went over. Next, click Type and select the class and the most relevant lead source that you can select. There's no right or wrong answer here, just pick what makes the most sense. Next, you will put the close date that you expect to close the deal by. For example, I will just put the golf tournament date. Stage Approach Prospect, because I haven't contacted anybody yet, and then I hit Save. Then you'll be prompted to add a product to your opportunity. Based on research and my past experience, I'm going to add a golf polo sponsor. Click the box on the left, hit next, add the quantity, and hit save. Once you've done so, you can click into the opportunity that you just created. You'll notice that it is very similar to the account page. You have a details tab with high level information regarding this specific opportunity. You have an activity tab where you'll log your activities 
and various related objects located on the right hand side of the page. I'm going to walk you through the details tab and the objects on the side. Let's start with the opportunity detail. First you'll see the opportunity name. Again, we will make sure to fill this in using the correct naming convention that we just talked about. The opportunity owner. This will show you which current or past PES student is the owner of this opportunity. Type. This helps you indicate which PES class this opportunity relates to. In this case, we are looking at creating a golf tournament opportunity for 3M for the fall semester. Amount. This will be based on the products that you have in the products object, which we'll show you in a second. The stage indicates where you are in the sales cycle. In advanced professional selling, you will learn more about these stages and what they mean. But again, it is important for you to update the stages of all of your opportunities regularly. Close date and reason. This is the date that you make a sale or determine that an account is no longer worth pursuing. Closed one means you closed a deal and closed lost means that you will no longer pursue them. Once you mark an opportunity as closed one or closed lost, you will be required to complete the closed reason field. Now, moving on to the related objects. You can access them on the right side of the page or by clicking the little shortcuts on the top in the block called Related List Quick Links. The first object you will see is Payments. In this block, it will show you the in-process or completed payments that your customer has completed. We obviously can't have a payment until we've set up the rest of our opportunity. And the next object is pretty important, Product. As you do your research on a customer's past sales or begin the sales conversation, you'll likely have an idea on what product they will be interested in. As you progress, you should be updating the products. This helps you understand the monetary value of your sales pipeline. Contact role. This is the role a contact plays in a specific account, contract, or opportunity, such as decision maker or purchaser. You can mark one contact as the primary contact for the opportunity. A contact can also have different roles in one transaction, so you should feel free to add one contact multiple times if they play multiple different roles. We can also have contacts from other accounts play a role in coaching you or helping you navigate a sale. For instance, if a former PES student coaches you on how to close the deal, then you could add them into the contact role as a coach or influencer. To add a contact role, click the arrow in the object and click Add Contact Roles. Search for the contact that you are referring to. Keep in mind that if the contact doesn't exist in Salesforce, you'll first have to add them to Salesforce before completing this step. Search for a person, click on their name, and then hit next. Once you've done so, you can click the block next to their name, listed as role, and select what role this person serves in this opportunity. At the top, you can edit who the primary contact is for this opportunity, keeping in mind that your primary contact may also have different roles in the organization. Once you hit save, your contact role will then be updated. The last object I want to talk about is notes and attachments. In this area, you can upload different files, graphics, images, or signed agreements from your customers. It is your responsibility to load these items in so that we can keep track of these items in the future, even after you depart from PES. So now at a high level, since we know what opportunities are, Let's talk about leads and when you should create them. Before contacting new or prospective customers, like I mentioned earlier, you should always check to see if they already exist in Salesforce. If you search and turns out that they don't exist in Salesforce, chances are you're going to have to make a new lead. But before you do that, make sure to search the company name and the contact that you are trying to contact. You should only make new leads when the company itself isn't in Salesforce. 
As I mentioned in the last module, if you need to add a new contact, simply navigate to that account and create the contact. You do not need any permission or to own the account to be able to do so. Making a new lead in Salesforce is quite simple. No matter what page of Salesforce you are on, you will see a leads tab at the top of your page, as is the case with opportunities and accounts. Click on the arrow near the word lead and click new lead. Most of these fields will make sense, but there are a couple things that I want you to know about some of the important fields. For lead source, there's no right or wrong answer here. Just look through the options and make the best, most relevant selection. Under product interest, this should indicate the class that you are interested in contacting this lead about. So if you are calling them about the golf tournament, you would put CRM. If you are calling them about the career fair, then you would put SM. Under lead status, there are quite a few options. Open, researched, contacted, qualified, and unqualified. Make sure that you are updating the status on each lead similar to your opportunity stages as they change. If you have yet to contact an organization but you've looked them up, then they should be listed as researched. If all you've done is contacted them but you haven't quite determined if they are a good option for us, then you should leave them at contacted. That being said, there are five required fields that you need to be able to qualify your lead. Those five things are a contact's first and last name, company name, contact information, which means phone number and or email address, a physical address, and at least one activity. Once you've completed these five fields, you can change your lead status to qualified. When you do so, this will automatically indicate to the APM that you have a lead that you would like to be converted into an account and opportunity. You can expect your lead to be converted within 24 hours or less. Once converted, your lead will then become an account with an opportunity that houses your activities. From here on, you'll treat this as a normal opportunity. The idea here is that you will find the name of a new company or meet someone in a networking event. Once you enter them as a lead, you contact them, whether that be via email, phone, or in-person meeting, making sure to log your activities along the way. And as you talk to them, you learn more about their business and eventually collect the rest of the information to continually update your lead. Once you determine that they are a good fit and you've collected the required information you need, you can qualify them. Otherwise, you can mark them as unqualified and move on trying to identify new valuable leads for your sales process. You'll notice here, leads do not have the ability to house or create payment links. So any account that may be interested in purchasing should be qualified and converted. However, if there's no prospect of selling to this prospective buyer, then you can mark it as unqualified. A student will receive credit for all activities in their leads and opportunities, but it is your responsibility to qualify the lead, meaning determine if they are a real valuable prospect with needs we can fulfill through our products, sponsorships, or services. If you're a visual learner, this decision tree graphic should help you understand when to create an opportunity and when to create a lead so that you can avoid any issues with your sales. So that sums up leads and opportunities. Remember, when in doubt, search Salesforce first and then decide if you need to start with a lead or an opportunity.